How to win at Danger Zone. Step 1. Kill them all. Kill them all. <laughs> Greetings, hi, the War Owl greets you. Welcome back, Happy New Year. First video I'm making of the year. I win a lot at Danger Zone. Surprise. So I thought I'd share with you some of the tips and tricks that I've learned beyond kill them all. Battle Royale involves a lot of luck. However, there's things you can do to greatly increase your chances of winning, even if you suck at the mechanics of Counter-Strike. If you make good decisions, you can defeat a player who has better aim. The first decision is where to spawn. So let's do some game theory. You want to spawn that has loot and where you'll engage the least number of players. If you pick a point in the middle of the map, you'll increase the potential number of players you'll engage because they can come at you from a larger number of angles. If you spawn near the edge of the map, you have water on one side. So you've successfully reduced the number of angles an enemy can attack you from. As a rule of thumb, players will spawn near the edges of the map and will move inward over time. My recommendation is to spawn at buildings near the edge that are surrounded by open areas so people can't sneak up on you. Lighthouse, Alpha, Charlie, all good spawns with lots of loot. Tourist is a great loot spot too, but you're gonna have to probably fight somebody over it. But that's just a theory. A game theory. Make sure you have three different spawn points that you feel comfortable with already in your head. When the game starts, try to get your first choice as fast as possible. Be ready to click it immediately. If someone else beats you there, go to your second as fast as you can. The faster you spawn, the less likely someone's gonna spawn near you. If you wait a long time and let other people choose and then pick a spot where nobody else is, you're gonna miss out on the good loot locations. So my advice is, Plop down that marker as quickly as you can, confidently, like an alpha male swinging his giant member around to assert dominance. This is even more true for team games. Decide beforehand as a team where you want to go. Pick three adjacent loot positions so there's enough loot for your entire team and grab them as quickly as possible. You are a wolf pack marking your territory. Uh, metaphorically, don't urinate on anything. Okay, so now you're swinging from a rope. It may seem awkward at first, but you can control where you land and swing quite a good distance. Look around and survey the loot, then plan what you're gonna grab and in what order. The physics of the rope is like being on a rope swing from your youth, something we can all relate to. If you've never been on a swing before, you probably had a very, very sad childhood. And I feel sorry for you. Would you like to talk sometime? If you don't have to go very far, wait for the rope to get close to the ground and then just pull yourself using WASD to your desired location. But if you want to swing further, swing away from where you want to go and then use the momentum to swing towards it. You can gain quite a bit of distance doing this. If you do it right, you can even swing three times. If you get stuck repelling, holding E will sever your cord. But be careful, you can take some serious fall damage. You can cut your cord to save an extra half a second when landing which is only really useful if you're spawning near another player and you need to scramble to find a gun. Now you're on the ground. Get a gun for goodness sake, you're exposed! No, 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 don't panic. Remember your training. You're all gonna die out there! The first thing you should prioritize is getting a weapon to defend yourself, obviously. If you see a pistol or a small red box, go for that first. The small red boxes have pistols. If all you have is a big red box, which has SMGs and submachine guns, look for a way to open it. You'll have to break it open with something other than your fists, like a melee weapon, a nade, a molotov, a breach charge, whatever you find. You can even shoot it open with your pistol or existing primary weapon. After getting a weapon, the second thing you should prioritize is finding armor and a helmet. This is pivotal to succeeding in Counter-Strike and Danger Zone. You need armor and a helmet. Armor spawns either just sitting on the ground or in blue boxes. Blue boxes have equipment in them. If you don't find one around your spawn, it's worth spending the $500 to purchase one right away. It's not that much money in the long run. When you order loot from the delivery drones, make sure that you're behind cover when you get it. It's easy to follow a drone and then kill somebody as they're looting. Don't be inside of a building or the drones will drop the box on top of it. 
the drones will only carry if you're standing still, so you can run around with them following you until you get to a good spot. If you're incredibly unlucky and you don't find a gun, and you don't have time to order one, right-click punching an opponent will knock their gun out of their hand. You have to time it just right. It's hilarious! It's not really worth taking the time to pick up a parachute. Parachutes will always spawn at high elevations where you actually need them, so if you find yourself up water tower or lighthouse, you do have an exit strategy. The parachute will automatically deploy after reaching max speed, but this doesn't save you from smaller jumps where you have to press spacebar manually. Now that you have a gun and armor, calm your nipples. The panic stage is over. Congratulations, you're now ready to murder people. You should always be checking your tablet every once in a while to keep tabs, pun intended, on where potential enemies could be. Yellow hexagonal grids means there's at least one guy there. Whenever you cross between grids, check your tablet. If the grid you are in stays yellow, congratulations, someone's lurking nearby. Loot as you go. The more you play, the more you'll remember the loot patterns. You should pretty much just grab everything you find, except hostages. There are two different missions in Danger Zone, High Value Target and Hostage Rescue. Neither are worth your time. If you see a High Value Target mission, which is a black briefcase, it doesn't hurt to pick it up. Both are worth $500. To put that in perspective, you can spend the most important minutes of the match carrying around some guy rudely breathing heavily into your ear, making yourself a massive target, only to net yourself the equivalent of half an ammo crate. If you find a gun that you are already carrying, press E on the gun and you'll pick up the ammo. If you find a new gun, it's your decision whether you want to switch or not, it's all personal preference, except the bison. Don't use the bison. Since all you can find at this point are SMGs, shotguns, and pistols, it makes sense to have a primary for close range and a pistol for medium and long range. If you see someone at very, very long distances and you still wanna shoot them, crouch using the pistols and go for headshots only. This will give you low enough spread to hit accurate shots. The P2000, USP, and Glock are incredibly accurate while crouching. For example, the P2000 and the USP have the same crouching accuracy as the M4A4 and the M4A1S. Pro tip! Breach charges stick to people! This means if you're in a team, you can load one of your teammates up with explosives and send them in. Now, I'm not gonna make the obvious joke here because I don't wanna get banned from YouTube. Beyond being hilarious, this is actually a viable strategy. If your teammate dies, there's now three explosive charges on his corpse. When the enemy goes to loot him, you can just detonate them. It's a dead man switch. Har har har. I don't know why, but sometimes when you have the charges on you and you press E, the charges fall off of you. When breach charges are on the ground, you can press E to pick them back up. If you press E on an enemy's breach charge, you'll silently disable it. When the enemy places a breach charge, you'll hear a very loud and distinct sound effect. This means don't go through that next door. Tip over! Let's talk money. You can get money in Danger Zone for everything. You can find wads of cash, find bags of cash, and blow open safes full of cash. When you kill a player, you'll get a reward based upon how far into the game you are, from $200 up to like a thousand. You get money for exploring new zones. Just walking into a new hexagonal grid and standing there will give you a sweet 100. You also get money just for existing. After every time period, you'll get a wad of cash. Sweet. If you run into a turret, do not fear, they're really easy to deal with. They will only shoot where their red laser sight is aimed, and they're only gonna shoot in obviously timed intervals. By the way, Valve missed a real opportunity here to use the portal turret. Hello, I see you. Turrets have motion sensors. That means they're gonna get distracted by anything that moves, even throwing your melee weapon with right click. Decoy grenades are particularly effective at distracting turrets. Oh, and decoys make footstep sounds, so they're great at distracting enemies too. If you don't have explosives or a gun to kill one, don't worry. 
just punch it. You can left click a turret and its aim is knocked away from you. Realistically, you should never really get hit by a turret. The only threat of a turret is getting killed by another player while you're distracted by it. Turrets are dragons and what is the treasure they guard? An ammo crate. So slay them and claim your prize. Ammo is notoriously scarce in Danger Zone. Moro, talk about the shut ammo. Shut up, shut up, shut up! So which of your weapons should you put the ammo into first? Now, I know this is common sense, but if you find an ammo box, you don't have to pick it up right away. You can remember where it is, find a gun you want to use, and then come back to it. And if you see, oh, like, unopened boxes, open the boxes first. Decide if you want to trade your guns, and then you can go back to the ammo crate. Uh, I suggest early game, since the pistols are so meta, put the ammo into your pistol until you have enough, like maybe a mag or two, so you have enough to kill like three or four players. Then you can start putting ammo into your primary. Your primaries at this point in the game are gonna be the shotgun and the SMG. Shotguns don't really need a lot of ammo. They're very ammo conscious. SMGs are the exact opposite. They horribly waste your ammo immediately. If you have an MP9, when you finally do engage, or any other gun for that matter, you have to be very conscious of your ammo. Don't spray, don't pre-shoot, don't wall bang, don't shoot uh, extraneous shots. Make sure when you shoot, those shots are going to hit. Go for headshots. Now the other thing you have to remember is your opponent also doesn't have a lot of ammo. Move around a lot. Uh, even shoulder peeking players who have a pistol make sense because they don't really have a lot of ammo. If you can waste it, they're screwed. Players in Danger Zone have 120 health and if they know what they're doing, they'll have armor and helmet as well. So let's say you have an MP9. That means it will take bare minimum eight shots to the chest to kill a player, or bare minimum, two shots to the head. When ammo is so damned hard to find, it doesn't make sense to ever shoot for the body. Pro tip! You can see what upgrades are on a tablet by the colored dots on the front and back. If you kill someone, check to see if the tablet is upgraded. If it is, switch tablets with them. Pro tip over! Pro tip! Oh, this door wants to charge me money. Pfft, just blow it up. Pro tip over. Pro tip. You can drop nades. Pro tip over. I reached out on Twitter to see what other crazy tips you find folks had to win at Danger Zone. Oh look, here's one now. Crazy tip. If you're the last player alive, you win the match. Actual crazy tip, if the last two Danger Zone players are killed off by C4, the player that is furthest from the explosion would win the match. See, that one's actually interesting and useful. Thank you, Valve. Very cool. So I've killed a few players, found a safe, got some money in the bank. What should I buy? This is where some people might disagree with me. I don't think it makes sense to purchase anything at this point in the game, unless you absolutely need it. If you're low on health from some of your fights, then purchase a medishot. If you're low on ammo and absolutely need more, then purchase some ammo. I don't think the radar jammer thing is worth it, and I don't think any of the tablet upgrades, except the high res upgrade, are worth it. And at 4,250, I out, you're gonna have enough for it anyway. If you somehow completely screwed up looting and you need a gun, there's only two weapons I'd recommend purchasing if they're available, the Deagle and the Scout. Both are very ammo efficient and the Scout's scope will give you an incredible early game advantage and is also useful in the very, very end game. I've won tons of games just using a Scout. I always try to save all of my money for the end game when the experimental weapons start to fall. At a certain point, care packages will fall from the sky. Inside are some of the best weapons in the game. The AK-47, the M4s, the AUG, the SG-553, the AWP, or the incredibly overpowered Auto Sniper. I've never lost a game with an auto sniper. It's a one hit kill to the head, no matter what. Oh, that's through the, that was through the roof as well. That's how much damage that does. Still not sure how an AK-47, the most common rifle in the world, is an experimental weapon. But okay. So how do you get a drop? Well, let's do some more game theory. At this point in the game, a lot of players are gonna be edge camping. I disagree with this strategy. I think it makes more sense to stay near the middle of the map so that you're closer to one of the drops when they spawn and you're gonna be in a more advantageous position when the red starts to spread. As soon as you see one of those drops start going down and you're in position to get it, go for it immediately. Even if you have to fight somebody for it, it is worth it. 
they are the end game weapons. You need to get one if you want a chance of winning unless you have something like a scout that you purchased. This is where the money you saved comes into play. You can purchase a bunch of ammo crates before the airdrop even hits the ground. So your ammo will come to you right after you obtain the weapon. What I like to do is buy a bunch of ammo crates, drop my tablet, and then go for the drop. After I get it, I then fall back to my tablet and get the ammo. Keep watch on your tablet to see if any of the other airdrops get taken, and keep track of which player has the special weapon. Whoever has one of these weapons has a severe advantage. Now is the end game. Your job is positioning yourself to where the enemy will have to push you. This means watching the red zone spread. I mean spread. Only now does that red zone tablet become useful, and it's very useful. If an enemy player is forced to push out of their area, you can plant a C4 explosive in their way, forcing them to run through it and take damage, or to stay in the red zone a bit longer and take damage. Don't worry about running through the red zone. If it gets you out of trouble, it's worth the damage you'll potentially take. You can also hit a medi shot, which makes you run faster and heals you over time to run through the red zone. Unlike other battle royale titles where you have to constantly watch all positions, because of the tablet, you're free to keep watch on specific players, and you can leave yourself open to angles where enemies cannot be. Just always keep mindful of where the enemies actually are. Dropping your tablet to create a diversion is a fun end game strategy. Purchase something cheap, drop your tablet, and leave. You can grab a new tablet off of a dead guy. The drone will deliver to your dropped tablet, and the enemy player will follow the drone, believing you're there. If you drop your tablet, you will still show up on radar, so there's no reason to ever be without a tablet. Medi shots give you 50 health over 5 seconds, so 10 health a second. Oh, and I almost forgot the most important tip to winning Danger Zone. Kill them all! <laughs>